Beautiful. And once we have set up the Redux DevTools, up next, let's see how we can access that initial state in any of the components. So we have the initial state in the slice. And let's say that I want to set up a navbar component where I want to access the amount. And the setup is following where we do want to create the components folder, then navbar.js. And in there we'll import cart icon. So that's the component that's coming from the icons folder. And I'll discuss how we can set up the component in the following video, because at the moment I do want to focus on the state value access. And then we want to import use selector. So that's a hook coming from react redux. And then in the navbar component before the return, we want to invoke use selector. And the selector is looking for one thing, it's looking for the function. And as a parameter, we get access to the entire state. So we're talking about the entire store. Again, in our case, we just have the cart, but eventually, we'll add more reducers over here. So since this is a parameter, of course, we can call it whatever we want. So you'll see probably state. But actually, my preference is to call this a store, because that signals to me that that is entire store. So the entire state of my application. And then more specifically, I'm looking for dot cart wire, because that's the name of the property over here. And then in initial state, if you remember, we do have the amount property. And of course, there's a million ways how we can set this up. For example, we can just return from this function this amount, or since in this case, we're returning the entire object, we can just structure it. So let's try to set this up. Where in the source, I want to create a new folder, and I'm going to call this components over here, then let's set up that navbar, navbar JS. In here, like I said, first, let's import cart icon, something I'm going to discuss in the following video, then we also want to get that use selector. So let's say use selector hook that is coming from react redux. And now let's set up that navbar component. So I'm going to use my extension, I'll set up the navbar. And first, let's set up the return. And then we'll worry about the actual state. So let's say here nav, I do want to add here a div. So inside of the div, let's go or I'm sorry, inside of the nav, let's go with div, let's add a class name of nav center. And here we want to go with heading three redux toolkit. And after that, let's save it. And we don't see anything. So let me refresh. Don't see anything in the browser. And of course, the reason for that is because I didn't import in the app.js. So let me go back. And in the app.js, let's import the navbar. And then let's set it up over here. So what I want to do, as far as the return in app.js, I just want to go with main, and then the navbar. So instead of the heading to Redux toolkit, we'll go with main tags. And then first we'll set up the navbar and then we'll set up rest of the card items as well. So that should be our navbar. Okay, that's awesome. And as far as the other stuff, I think I'm going to go here with a card icon, but that is going to be placed in the nav container. So right after this heading three, I'm going to go with div with a class of nav container container. And in here, let's set up that cart icon. Yep, that is how it's going to look like. And then let's go with div the class of amount container, and then paragraph with a class of total, total hyphen and amount. And at the moment, let's just place zero here. Let's save this. And now let's see how we can access the entire state of our application. So first, let's just log the sucker. Let's say use selector. So that's the hook. And like I said, it's looking for one parameter, which is going to be our function. And then inside of this function as a parameter, we get that entire store. So for time being, I'm going to call this store, and I'll log it. I'll say 
But the only thing that I want to do in this function is log the store. And what you'll notice in the console is our entire state, which is just awesome, if you ask me. So take a look over here. We have card items, we have amount, and we have the total. So again, I know I'm repeating myself, but essentially the idea is that using this use selector, notice how we don't need to pass anything coming from the specific slice or nothing like that. We can right away in this function access our entire store. And essentially what we want to do, we want to return something. Whether that is specific property, for example, amount, or of course you can return the entire card and then you can destructure. So first let's just set it up where we return the amount. So notice over here we have undefined in line five because we're not returning anything from this function yet. And let's set up over here in the paragraph. And then we'll take a look at the, the structuring option as well. I don't think I'm going to leave this for your reference because again, we'll set up multiple ways anyway. So first let's go with amount. And that one is equal to, let's again invoke use selector. Let's pass in the function. And I'm going to be setting up the arrow function and I'll go right away with implicit return. So again, in here, we're accessing the entire state of our application. And we go with store cart, because that's the property value. And yes, once we add more reducers in our store, then of course, we'll be able to access it. So if I'm going to go here, let's say with modal, and I'm not going to pass anything in because I do need to set up the reducer. Then of course we'll be able to access with store dot modal. Hopefully that is clear. And this is very, very useful because again, we don't need to import anything specific from that slice. We have access to entire store. And then let's go with amount. So this is what I'm returning from the function. And probably it's not going to be surprising if I pass here the value. It's still going to be zero. Now let's test this out though. Let's go to our features slice and let's change this around. Let's say that there's going to be five items. And then when I save, notice now, of course, I have this value of five. So we know that our functionality works. And like I said, there's a million different ways how we can set this up. And one of them is actually the structuring. So I know that I can return store.cart, which is essentially a object, correct? And then Inside of it, I have the amount property. So this is also valid. Notice value did not change and we didn't get any bugs. So that's how we can access data from our slice. We need to pick the component. We need to use a use selector. In here, we pass in the function. And as a parameter, this function gets the entire store. And then we just need to pick what we want to return. In my case, I want to return cart from this function, it is an object, and it represents this initial state. And more specifically, I'm looking for the amount. That's why I destructure it. And then I display it here in the return. 